All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the Tabletop Almanac. My name is Simon. I am your host, proprietor, what have you, of the channel and blog and whatnot. So, this episode, I'm coming to you with a review of the Alien Starter Set. This is for the Alien RPG. Now, if you already follow the channel, you might have seen that I'm actually running the Building Better Worlds, uh, Lost Worlds campaign as an actual play. Uh, if not, please go check it out. I'll put a link down in the comments. Uh, but this is about the starter set. Now, when I was younger, starter sets, quick starts, whatever, for RPGs were perfectly fine. But they were... You know, most of the time they were a pamphlet. Not a pamphlet. That's unfair. Yeah, too small. Inaccurate. They were more like a magazine-sized thing. They were like a 80-page maximum, maybe 40-page. Uh, pre-generated adventure, pre-generated characters, stripped-down rules, and so on, just to get you a taste of what it was like. So perfectly fine, perfectly good, perfectly usable. But starter sets were not as common a thing. Um, you didn't have necessarily a complete boxed game that would get you into whatever you were playing. Now, I mean, my very first one was the the basic red box, uh, Larry Amor, warrior against the dragon in a cavern full of gold thing, covering levels one to three in D and D, and that was very much a, an introductory set. But like I said, not a lot of games had them. And so it's really cool that these days there are a bunch of them out there and these are nothing to sneeze at. These are really good products. Uh, Cubicle 7 does a lot of them. Free League does a bunch too. And so we are looking at the Alien Starter Set. First thing I'm going to tell you what's in it and then we'll talk a little bit about it and uh, what's useful for it. So I got my copy from uh, noblenight.com. There's an affiliate link down there. And I picked it up because it was, it was secondhand, but also uh, it comes with, because it's a starter set, it's a box, meaning it has room for dice. It has dice, and I was looking at the dice on their own, I'm like, eh, you know, the extra cost, I get a whole bunch of cool stuff for it, too. Uh, but, I mean, who among us doesn't love dice, but what's nice is that these aren't just a different color, you know, matching your new character. Uh, these are specifically made for Alien and very useful. They're six-sided dice. They have um, a sort of target reticule on the six, indicating a success. And then the stress dice have a little face hugger icon on the one, indicating that this shit's about to go really bad for you. So, what else do we get in here? Well, the contents are a truncated rule book. Oop. Truncated to 104 pages. That's, again, not bad. There is the complete scenario Chariot of the Gods you know, by sci-fi novelist Andrew E.C. Gaska, which is a very good introductory adventure and er, scenario. Let's say scenario. And starts off a trilogy of interconnected scenarios that also connect to the campaigns in the Colonial Marines Operations Manual, the Frontier War, and to an extent, although if any of the players are watching, and this is while it's happening, uh, the Lost Worlds campaign. But then it comes with goodies. So, character sheets. Five of them for all the pre-generated characters. They have pictures, they have their stats, they have the info that you'll need. Um, they're nice glossy paper. Uh, these are really, really nice. Then they also come with, and honestly, I didn't actually notice these for the longest time, counters. Uh, part of part of Alien doesn't, it doesn't have to use counters. I played through the entire Chariot of the Gods, and I'm playing through Lost Worlds without use of counters. In fact, we're not do, using the virtual tabletop uh, the foundry modules, sort of beyond keeping everything stored there and using it. Um, so, uh, these are kind of kind of handy, but we'll talk about these maybe a little bit more when we get into rules that might be relevant to them. So I'm just going to put them to the side here. There's also a great map. 
unfoldable map of the Middle Heavens, which is the, the occupied space of the alien universe, and has... Uh, I mean, it's a poster map, and it's got so much stuff on it. The poster board is really thick and really strong. And here's where you might wind up using some of these tokens. This is the map of some of what you'll ha be, well, no spoilers, of uh, use in Chariot of the Gods. Okay. And then there are the two books. The rule book and Chariot of the Gods. Um, when I first heard there was... Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> I didn't look down and see that there are cards as well. There's a huge stack of cards covering things like personal agendas, because all the players have them. Weapons. Initiative, because it's done via card. And more weapons. And then NPCs. Super handy to have, right? Like, who needs notes when you can just pick up a card and go, oh, uh, 357 Magnum Revolver does... Two damage and has a bonus of plus one at a medium range. And it costs $300. So, also very cool. Uh, I also have Heart of Darkness for Alien, uh, the third of the cinematic scenarios. Also comes in a box, also has cards. So my guess is Destroyer of Worlds, the second, second one, also has cards. And other stuff too, just not dice. Okay, so let's talk Alien. When I first heard about it, I immediately thought of the old, I think it was Leading Edge Aliens action RPG using the Phoenix Command, not to be mistaken with Phoenix Dawn Command system, which, to the best of my understanding, is a highly simulationist, very, you know, I don't want to say gritty in the terms of, like, where we might kind of commonly use gritty, like gritty fantasy, like, oh, you can die, or no hit points, or blah, blah, blah. I mean, yes, you should be able to die really quickly in Alien. Why shouldn't you? But uh, let's call it unwieldy. You know, the the, the point where simulationist uh, becomes synonymous with too much detail. And Alien doesn't need it, as we can see in Free League's game. So a couple of things. When I first heard about it, I thought of that. And then secondly, I thought, what is the longevity of an alien game? You know, you start, aliens, you die. Maybe you escape. And how many times can you do that and still have fun with it? Well, I think there were kind of two things I wasn't thinking of. One, I hadn't read the game yet. And the second one being, that's fine. And one of the... One of the things I've appreciated about games that have come out in the last little while is that... Last well, little, little while, I'd say like five, ten years. Not further than that. Maybe further than that, but not kind of as a rule. Is that it really... The design tendency has been to really hone in on a play style and promote and sort of advocate and then gear everything towards realizing that, that play style. And in the case of Alien... Why shouldn't it be? Who wants to play Alien tonight? Bust it out. You know. Get an egg implanted in you. It explodes to your chest. You die. Next month you play it again or not. Like There's nothing wrong with a pickup game. Alien might need, you know, a little more finessing than to make it a strict pickup game. But what what's wrong with that? And so, had I read the book before thinking that, then I would have known that they have two different kinds of scenarios in Alien. One is the campaign scenario, or campaign play. And that's what we're doing in Lost Worlds, which is a lengthier version. Think of it as a season of Alien versus the cinematic scenarios, which are like a movie. Chariot of the Gods, Destroyer of Worlds, Heart of Darkness are all cinematic scenarios. They are the ones where... You start off, get introduced to the characters, they find out something weird is going on, and then they die because of aliens. The campaign, uh, the campaign style one, extends that out over a longer period of time. In Lost Worlds, we have yet to meet any xenomorphs or xenomorph creatures 
a couple of episodes in. Uh, still the first scenario, but a couple of episodes in. So the likelihood is that it appears over time. It stretches it out. It makes you uh, not comfortable. Maybe like you just dread it further and for a longer period of time. So that's how you, that's, that's it. Like you get around it by not freaking out about that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, I ran this using the Foundry Virtual Tabletop module. Uh, thank you, Free League, for the the supply in that. Uh, it's a very good module. Oh, oh God. System. I, modules mean something different in Foundry, but to me, it's the same sort of thing. System. where So somebody put together all that content into Foundry so that you could then access it there and play through there. And it's really good, and it helps teach some of the rules. Um you learn how to make dice rolls or skill tests, conflict tests, how to handle stress and all that sort of thing. Almost without looking at the book, but the book's helpful. Uh, so let's look at just briefly. Uh, the rule book here is, like I said, 104 pages. It covers uh, this is about 21 pages talking about Alien the game and about the different kind of styles of play you might have with it. it the core book touches on them more, but this at least sort of introduces the idea of um, the different careers you can have on the frontier. Colonists, marines, space truckers, company reps, and so on. Uh, the core book expands those into sort of campaign frameworks. Um, game modes is what I meant by cinematic play and campaign play. Uh, one fun thing is that the Game Master is known is still the GM, but they're known as the Game Mother in a shout-out to the uh, the AI system of Alien. All right. So it's a game of space horror, sci-fi action, and a sense of wonder. And those are the key themes. They introduce them right here. But if you've watched Alien, even Prometheus, and I haven't seen Covenant yet, but then you'd know that that is... The idea, it's about sort of uncovering and discovering our place in the universe and how it, it, we're really just going to get fucked and eaten by stuff. Okay. So, uh, characters are... Well, I won't, I'll talk about character creation for the core book review, but uh, characters themselves are very... I want to say straightforward. There are four attributes... You have um, a set of skills, uh, a, a fixed set of skills, and you roll a di dice pool of attribute plus skill, and you want to get a six to succeed. If you get a six, you succeed. Case closed. If you get multiple sixes, you can spend those as um, resources to do extra effects. In combat, you might do more damage. Um, you might speed something up. You might persuade somebody more or for longer than normal. Everyone has talents, which are your sort of catch-all term for things that make them different. And sometimes they give you bonus dice to certain activities, uh, sometimes other, other things as well. Now, there are a couple of things that are uh, sort of central to Alien that don't necessarily show up in every other Free League Year Zero game. There's stress, well, health, health, okay, health is health, it's damage and so on, uh, but personal agendas, and especially in the cinematic scenarios, because they're pre-generated characters, everyone comes with a personal agenda, and each act, they get a new one that expands on or changes it based on the events of the previous act, and this can be things like get the sample and get out of here, you know, Leave everyone else to die if you have to. Um, or, so-and-so's my friend, and I really gotta watch out for them. These are all options for your agendas. And when you make your own character for a longer style play, you can set your own agenda. Um, then, the stress. Stress is fun. Stress is very fun. So when you're rolling your dice um, to... You know, make a skill check. Then, if you roll... Hold on. If you happen to roll... 
Why am I not there? If you happen to roll uh, poorly, or uh, if certain events cause you to accumulate stress, then whenever you make a roll, you are going to um, add stress dice to your die pool, and those are the yellow dice here. And these can get sixes too, and that's, that's awesome, that's super cool. But if you roll the facehugger symbol, a one, then you risk going into a panic, which is basically everything's just, you know, getting to you too much. Then you check the panic table to see what the effect is. And this could be things like, um, you flee in terror, or we had somebody shoot at a xenomorph and panic and drop their gun. That sucks. They got out of there, but it still sucks. When you're rolling, you can always push your character to roll again, sort of. The idea is that every die roll is a definitive one. This is 99% your best effort to accomplish the task that you, you will want to. But if you haven't, or you don't get enough sixes to your liking, then you can re-roll any die that is not a six, take a stress point, and see what happens. Uh, panic from stress, like you'll roll stress dice on every single roll. So whether it's the first roll or whether it's a pushed roll, you'll still roll them. And remember, if you're adding that point of stress, stress dice. It can get, I wouldn't say out of hand. Um, as of this recording, our last Lost World session, did have a whole lot of of stress dice rolling and panic induced moments, and that's fun. Uh, it takes it does take away some agency to your character, but it promotes the style of play that it's after. And you know, maybe your character isn't suited for life on the frontier, and so they will go into a panic. Don't hesitate. Don't worry about doing that. It's just part of part of the style. Okay. Oh, uh, what do we want to do here? So, anytime you modify that roll, you're gaining or losing dice. You typically don't, like I said, you typically don't need multiple successes um, because you want that one. If it's a pose, you want more successes than the other person because each of your successes takes away one of theirs. Okay. I think we're pretty, uh, pretty good on that. So, the thing... Uh, combat is is rough and combat uses zones if you're not familiar with zones the idea is to remove a precise measurement system and just have an area of influence or area of relevance and you split it up into zones and these can be one room as a zone it can be multiple spots in a room as a zone you know each corner could be a zone or this little alcove could be a zone and so on and that works really well when you're not using a physical representation of things so you can quickly sketch it out somewhere or even just do like a mind map um, I know some people don't like it as much because, like, well, all of a sudden I was five feet away, now I'm, I'm 30 feet away, and I'm still in short range because of the zones. Um, but, like I said, that it does help expedite gameplay and expedite that, in my opinion, this humble reviewer's opinion, and player and game master, etc. It expedites the parts of the game that you want to expedite. Um, were we playing Aliens, the old one? Yeah, you might have, again, supposition, but you might move five meters around, and the alien moves 20 meters around, and the tension comes from, like, I can't actually move enough meters in a round to get away from the alien. Whereas here, it's maybe they go a couple of zones or so on, right? And you can only go one, and so they can get around you, yada, yada. Uh, there are loose range categories, so a short short range is a few meters away from you in the same zone, or medium is up to 25 meters away, or in an adjacent zone. So they do try to give you a benchmark to work with, uh, which is appreciated and, and helpful. Okay, so tokens. Uh, tokens can come in handy with this neat little element of play known as stealth mode. The idea, of course, is, well, 
walking through the complex or the ship and just waiting for this thing to jump out at you and eat you. Enemy movement is handled secretly by the, the game mother after each PC has moved. And in this case, this is why you might want counters because you'll have, they recommend having a separate map for the GM versus the one that the players can see so they can track where everyone is and then see what corresponding. I didn't really use it much in in the playthrough of Chariot of the Gods, not because I don't think it's a great idea, but um, I'm still working on learning Foundry at its like basics, and so to me that was sort of an extra level of I don't want to deal with this right now. Um, but the idea is that you're sort of moving and detecting, moving and detecting. This is motion trackers become a thing. This is how you get those moments of, oh my god, they're right on top of us. But they're, I don't see them. Where are they? And then you look up and acid spittle, blah, 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 blah. Right? So, cool, handy. That's why you got some tokens. Um, use them as you will. Uh, I won't get too deep into the specifics of fighting and damage and things like that. Uh, you can take critical injuries. You can die easily. Um, you can be taken out of the action and then brought back into it. Uh, the healing takes a little bit of time, but, you know, again, maybe not quite as much as a simulationist, a full-on simulationist system would. Uh, point is, it does still evoke the same feeling and gets that, you know, Things are dangerous in the alien universe vibe. Uh, okay, so that's, I mean, to me, those are the relevant things of the starter set rulebook. Uh, and I gave you a little bit of how, how it plays uh, there as well. I'll reiterate the whole section when I do the core book review um, because it, people don't have time to watch both sometimes, but there we are. Okay. Uh, needless to say, I like the system. I like how it plays out. Uh, I would even use it for a horror game. And I think, you know, you're thinking there's Simon and Wolf, of course, Alien is a horror game. And yeah, it is. But, you know, I might strip out a bunch of stuff and use it as a general psychological horror game, because why not? You've got the fundamentals there for it. Um, unlike some of the other Year Zero games, and by which I mean some of the more recent ones, Twilight 2000 Blade Runner, uh, this still uses the die pool and not the die step for um, rolling tests. Okay, uh, let's talk Chariot of the Gods. This is the introductory scenario for Alien. Um, to me, you know, whatever it is uh, should be good. It should really reflect the style of play. It should get across what players should expect out of it. And really sell you on the game. And it did for me, and it sort of did for my players, uh, the other players. And I'm going to say that only because I didn't do the best job I could have running that scenario. And not necessarily because I didn't read it enough or know what was going on to the extent I needed to. I did, and things are laid out in a way that you can find them relatively quickly, although sometimes I do wish I was able to find them a bit quicker in Foundry. Um, but that's more a matter of how Foundry works by not um, not being able to alt-tab between internal windows and things like that. Unless there's a, something out there, a mod for it, let me know. I uh, would love it, honestly. Uh, okay, Chariot of the Gods... You, your PCs, uh, there are five of them, play the pre-generated characters, the, the crew of a salvage ship, which is just on its way home, when something happens with the engines and it also detects another ship. And this ship turns out to be a long-lost old science vessel. And if you've seen Prometheus, which you may well have, uh, then it's sort of from that era. Because your ship is having problems, it's worth going over to check it out. 
I'm not going to spoil anything. Every character has a personal agenda. There's a Wayland yutani Company agent on board. Your ship. One of the pre-generated characters. They may have their own motivation to go on and check it out. Who knows? Uh, from there, it's a matter of investigating the ship, getting its power back up, interacting with anyone you may encounter in there, uh, and ultimately surviving to live another day in the face of cosmic horror and uh, dangerous alien beings, beings and people. A couple of things that would have been a little more helpful with it, in my mind. And I have talked to a couple of other people who have run it as well. Our, when I say my mind, I mean our table. You get told a bunch of things about the relations between the characters and who's friends with whom and, you know, useful background stuff like that. It, but it doesn't give you the opportunity to play through it that much until you start play. But that means that in, you know, the first act, you're really feeling things out, getting things under control, and, you know, you may not be going like, oh, that company company guy, I don't trust him at all, um, but I know we got to get this thing running, we got to do it now, so I'm not really going to think about that too much. And that's not a bad you know, mindset to be in, but had there been a little more preamble, we were just thinking one scene where, you know, people's loyalties are shown and tested and questioned um, would go a long way to setting up the level of trust between the crew. Not insurmountable. You know, your players might sit there and go like, all right, let's let's do this. Uh, let's get in this backstory and make it our own. Totally valid. Totally for you. Um, to do as you want. We just found that we didn't, maybe we didn't give enough time to do that. Maybe the people didn't have as much time to really think and talk between them, each other about their characters. You know, we just kind of wanted to get into it and play. So, not a fault of the scenario uh, specifically, but could be allayed a little bit in causing uh, some difficulty for the people playing it. Um, again, nothing you can't tweak and fix. I know that some other people have sort of uh, written additional uh, this happened before now segments to give to to the players, and when I run this again, because I probably will, um, I, for one, I would like to run it better than I did. Uh, nobody died. I kind of consider that a failing on my part. Uh, failure. Failure. Nobody died. Nobody died. I wanted to kill him, but it didn't happen. Uh, so I wanted to try to run it again so that I do kill as many of the PCs as possible. Um, there are some really good spooky moments. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna say that the way the scenario is set up and written and how everything works, uh, there are plenty of of moments where you're gonna go like, "Oh, what's happening next?" And that will only be assisted by following the rules properly. Because, for example, power and air supply, food supply, all these things get tested in Alien. And what did I forget to do but make the rolls for them or have them make the rolls? So when I started to say, you know, you don't have a lot of air left in your pack, eh, that's something. But it's different to go like, now make the roll and cross one of the, you know, units off. You're that much closer to having to take off your helmet to breathe the atmosphere inside the ship. Not that I'm saying you wouldn't want to. I'm not spoiling anything. Again, my screw up on that part. But, take it from me, that tells me, and should hopefully tell you, you want to do that. Make sure you remember to do those things. I would kind of maybe make a, uh, a list on a post-it note of, remember to do this, this, and this, 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 and this. That can't hurt to prep that much. 
So, overall, though, the scenario was really fun, in my mind. And people did it, the, the table did enjoy it in as much as it was a self-contained, pre-generated character situation. Some people take to pre-gens better than others, and some people don't. Just, you know, our mileages all vary. Um, so, do I want to tell you much more specifically about Chariot of the Gods? Probably not. <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. You hear it. Just do what you would do for any published adventure. Read it. Take some notes. Make a note of the thing of where you're going to have to reference things in the rule book. It references the shorter starter rule book and not the core one. The so don't look on the same pages because that's not correct. Um, and I feel there might have been one thing that I tried to find, which was more information on, of course, in the core book. Uh, but wasn't I don't think it was critical. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I suppose that's it. Uh, at this point, you know, I'm not really uh, leaving you with a massively. Uh, ah, right, there's one more thing. The fun deal with xenomorphs is when you're running them. Uh, first of all, xenomorph in. An alien references any sort of alien creature, not just the the ones we're used to. But what what's fun is that when they attack, you don't, as a GM, don't pick. Okay, claw claw bite. You roll on a table, and it tells you this thing flees, moving away in a single action into the nearest air duct, or it jumps onto the victim, hissing and showing its razor sharp teeth. Or it bites their leg, or it bites their throat, or it slashes with its tail. And in all these situations, it's going to be randomized what action it takes. A couple of thoughts on that. I kind of like that in a scenario where PCs are likely to die... I don't necessarily always have to feel responsible for doing it. I can just let the minions do it and then say, oh, but the dice. And it's not even I, you know, it's not even I just fudged rolling damage or I followed rolling damage. It said it, it kills you. And then to an alien mindset, am I reaching there a little bit? Maybe, maybe not. It means that you don't necessarily have to make that decision because there's something else pushing them in a way that uh, you yourself being a likely a human being of earth in the 21st century as of this recording may not have the mentality of the xenomorph genus all right genus i'm not a scientist so that's another fun and cool part about Alien. So I would recommend Alien, the RPG. Unless you don't like horror and sci-fi. In that case, don't. It's not worth your time. And, it, you know, leave that copy for someone else who would want to play it. But if you do like sci-fi horror, if you are a fan of the franchise, uh, by the way, check out the comic books. Um, I have all, almost always been entertained by them. And they stretch back a long, long time. Um, there are a lot of them out there. And it's funny how many times you can just go like, okay, yeah, I'm going to watch them all just die in a different way than they did in the last storyline. Uh, much like the movies, you know, half the fun is going there to see how outrageously unqualified some of the protagonists are at handling this situation. Okay. All right. I jumped around a bit there. Uh, TLDR. Check out Alien the RPG from Free League Publishing. If you don't want to dive in all the way and get the core book, grab the starter set. It comes with a bunch of cool extra stuff and the cinematic scenario Chariot of the Gods, followed up by Destroyer of Worlds and Heart of Darkness as two other products. Uh, also, if you want to check out their content for uh, virtual tabletops, they have them for Foundry. And if you are a Foundry user or a fan, they are, they are pretty darn good. So... 
take a look. Um, I, I recommend everything around it so far. Uh, and there's not tons out, but I've got everything but Destroyer of Worlds now. Um, definitely worth looking into. Great game. Uh, great starter set. Uh, definitely worth your, your time and money. Um, and has enough like extra little stuff that if you're playing it in person at a table, then you've got a lot of nice representation tokens and, and things like that. Also, I mean, okay, the the graphic design, editing, layout, all of this is fantastic. Um, it It is not excessively wordy. Uh, the pages are not just dense walls of text. It's very easy to read. Uh, so, so definitely um, consider that a plus. And it's very gorgeous. I mean, scary and hauntingly gorgeous, but it's gorgeous. So, Alien RPG from Freely Publishing. Check it out. Uh, you will enjoy it. I hope. Uh, until next time, my name is Simon with the Tabletop Almanac, and bidding you good health, and goodbye. <laughs>